record right now. And with that, we are going to get started. If there are any questions, please pop them into the chat pod. Bettina, anything before I get underway? I think we're good. I think we're good, yeah. Awesome. I haven't checked the chat pod yet, so thank you. If there's anything, please just call it to my attention. I'm happy to pause. So good morning. Thank you all for being here. For those who jumped in a little late, we are glad that you're able to make it. Um, so today we're going to talk about social media for your local agency and whether you're a local road agency or another municipal department. Um, I think you'll take away some tips today that hopefully will be helpful to you. We've got about 90 minutes together, so we're going to go a little fast at some points, um, but I'm going to kind of skip through the parts of today's session that I think Stephen Buckley from New, Ham from New Hampshire Municipal Association will do a really great job touching on further on April 22nd. So I want to just put out there for those of you um, who maybe aren't registered yet. This today will be a bit of an intro to social media, you know, how to get started, some of the things for developing content. And then on April 22nd, Stephen will join us and he's going to talk kind of about the policies, the procedures, the, the considerations you want to have for freedom of speech and making sure that you are um, as accessible as, as you can be you know, from a municipal perspective to everybody who's engaging with your social media page. So great follow up. If you're not registered for that, we're going to encourage you to register for that as well. But before we get started, I want to just launch a quick poll here and get a sense of who is already using social media. So if you would take the moment and respond to that, just let us know where you're at in your use of social media right now. All right, so it looks like, you know, about half of you have a page available to you. Maybe you don't own it directly, but you could share and post through other municipal sites a little bit more than half. Um, a few of you have your, your own local highway department page or your own local um, team page that you can manage. And then we got a couple of you that are just considering it. Uh, so that is good. We are glad to see um, how, how everyone kind of fits into that. And that's kind of the mix of, um, what we're seeing now, you know, lots of agencies are online. Many of them are using another uh, municipality department's page. Maybe it's Park and Rec. Maybe it's the town um, page to share their information. Some have ownership over their own site and are managing that independently. And then some are just continue are, are just um, thinking about it. So I'm going to share those results just just so you can see where the mix falls for this. And I've kind of got this slide here to get us started to think about the idea of nothing is really the same as it was. So if we, we tend to think, yeah, well, you know, we've always communicated through the website and it's working out great, or we've always um, used email or we haven't done social media before and, and it seems to be fine. Um, everything changes. You know, we've got some pictures here that a phone booth, who would have thought you know, 30 years ago that a phone booth would no longer be a staple, that we wouldn't see them everywhere. And nowadays, if I come across a phone booth, I always feel compelled to like, take a picture of it because I'm still so amazed to see a phone booth out there any, anymore. Um, but everything changes. You know, we're no longer using typewriters, of course, to, to type um, and we're not even writing messages or letters as much as we used to. So how we communicate continues to evolve, continues to change. Um, so you know, maybe 10 years ago, we might have thought, yeah, you know, social media is really not going to be that big a communication tool. It's, it's more of an independent connection, staying in touch with family and friends. Certainly that has changed. Um, and now is a great time to take a look at social media. In fact, you know, studies show that seven out of 10 American adults are using um, Facebook, so are on Facebook and are using it. So you know, that's a big part of an audience. 70% of um, your potential audience is using social media or using Facebook. So um, certainly there, there's a population of people that we can um, communicate with through that, that one site. And there are multiple sites, of course. Today, we'll talk a bit about Facebook probably in particular. It tends to be the site that um, we're using most um, at UNHT2. We're again, certainly seeing that many people are on Facebook, but there are lots of social media sites. So um, not necessarily selling one or the, the other today, but just talking about the one that might be the more common way to get started in the world of social media as part of your strategy and going from there. In fact, studies show that um, adults are averaging about two and a half hours a day on some sort of social media platform. So that's 15% of waking life. So we're spending 15% of our awake hours on social media, whichever platform it might be. Uh, so that's, you know, it's about a mix of um, 
women and men. So almost half and half, 44% female, 56% male. Um, but the biggest age group in terms of those who are using social media is that age group of 25 to 34. Um, so you know, certainly you can look at this information from a lot of different perspectives um, in the, the age group that's maybe younger than 25 might be using different platforms more frequently. Um, but kind of across the board, we are seeing Facebook is still really, really popular, you know, 2.7 billion monthly active users. That is a lot of people um, that are out there using social media and Facebook. So the question isn't really whether or not we should be using social media. It's um, how do we do it effectively? So this is a great quote that I think kind of sums that up. We don't have a choice on whether we do social media. The question is how well we do it. And particularly if you're a local road agency or a municipality, you've got some complexity to choosing to use social media. There are some additional considerations for you. And we'll talk about some of those today, um, but you wanna do it well and you wanna make sure you're doing it in a way that um, really um, adds to your communication strategy and doesn't open up your municipality to potential concerns um, in terms of freedom of speech or how you're maintaining records. So there's a lot to, to consider as you jump into that social media arena. So we'll talk about some of that today and Stephen will follow up with that on April 22nd as well. What does social media include? Um, so like I said, you know, we'll talk kind of more closely about Facebook today, but it includes other engagement sites like Facebook, Twitter. Um, Twitter is, is kind of a micro blog. So it's people sharing short little posts, um, photo sharing sites, you know, Instagram and Flickr you might be familiar with, podcasts, um, videos, you know, such as you see on YouTube, uh, Facebook go live videos, Instagram, TikTok, those sort of things blogs, and a whole lot more. So really, we're continuing to see that social media landscape evolve. Um, we're seeing um, different sites be popular with different um, parts of our population, whether it's you know, by age. TikTok really kind of blossomed in the past year or so. I'm seeing far more use of TikTok than um, maybe a couple of years ago. So certainly, it continues to evolve. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that you want to keep ahead of. But when you're thinking about how to use social media in your own local agency. I think the four Ps is kind of the best way to, to start and to develop a strategy. The first one being purpose. What are you trying to accomplish? What is your purpose? Take that good hard look at why you're thinking about joining a social media platform for your local road agency. What is the value of it? What will you want to share? What do you want to get out of that? What do you hope your audience will get out of it? So understanding your purpose is kind of the first step. And the second step is the people. Who are you trying to connect with? Who is your audience? Um, what sites are they using? What, where are they right now engaging already? How are you currently kind of connecting with them? Um, what other opportunities do you think there are to connect with them? Where are they already congregating? You know, are there certain social media sites or pages where your audience already is? So understand the people that you're trying to reach. Uh, and then from there, as you start to structure your social media strategy, you're gonna to wanna to think about policy. You know, how is it going to be managed? Uh, what are going to be your policies for content and for management of content and promotion? How do you let folks know that you have a social media site? How do you build engagement, build the, the followers on your page? So we'll talk um, quite a bit about purpose, people, and promotion today, and we'll hit a little bit on policy, and then we hope you'll come back on April 22nd to get a little deeper into that policy side of things. So Bettina, any questions or anybody in the audience questions at this point? I'm going to take a quick five-second pause and just make sure we don't have anything. Don't Nothing in the anything. chat pod yet. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so people, who are you trying to reach? What can you do with social media to help them? You know, what are their pain points? What are their interests? What are their struggles? What sites are they on and when? Um, you, you probably already know this. You know the things that are going on, for instance, in your transfer station. You know, are recyclables being commingled? Are things um, being processed correctly in terms of composting, if you've got that in your community? Um, are there questions about getting a sticker for the transfer station? What are some of the common questions when there's a winter storm in terms of parking? So you kind of know what some of the pain points are for your community, just because you're taking those calls, you're engaging with these people every day. That can be a great way to start and think, who are you trying to reach and what are you trying to do for them? What is your purpose? Is it going to be um, an opportunity to educate? whether you're educating on public works uh, and advocacy for public works in your industry, 
maybe you're sharing news and information. You want to make sure that your community is kept up to date on road closures or um, upcoming road closures or work you're doing. Um, are you championing the industry? You know, is this going to be an opportunity to build workforce awareness for you? Is it going to be an opportunity to um, engage with your community and build awareness of what you're doing within the town or the city? and enhance public relations, you know, that can be part of the purpose as well. Are you creating or changing perceptions? Um, within that process, you, you could be building community advocates. The information you share certainly contributes to that or other things, you know, so purpose can really be pretty broad. And certainly if I've um, missed anything here, I encourage you, you know, pop into the chat pod what your purpose is when you're, when you're engaging through social media or within your town. If you've already got a site or if you're thinking about a site, what would the purpose be for that to set that up and structure that? I apologize, I am dealing with allergies, so I know I sound a little sniffly here. Uh, what to post. Um, so we talked a bit about purpose and people, and that's gonna help drive your content decisions. Um, so when you're thinking about what is my content, you know, what am I gonna share on social media? It's not just about creating a platform or making a profile. From there, you wanna make sure that you have content to share, to push out or to share with, with your audience. So understanding your purpose and understanding the people is gonna help you make decisions about your content and what you're posting. You want it to be a good mix of sharing uh, and kind of um, celebrating. So you don't necessarily want all one side to be what, what some call the soapbox, where you're up there on your profile and you're sharing your information only, you're pushing out information from your community or from your team, and it's, it's a lot of you engaging out in the world. Um, you're gonna find that in typically in, in those type of sites, there's less engagement from the audience. Maybe there are fewer followers, but the audience might not be sharing as much of your content or posts. You might not get as much as that echo um, opportunity where people are bringing others to your site because they're sharing your content. So there's the soapbox side of things. And then there's the other side, which I've heard people call the dinner party. And that's where you know people are engaging. It's more social. It's a lot of back and forth conversation, comments, um, you, know, you want to, as a municipality in particular, you want to regulate that a bit. You want to make sure it's not a kind of free for all. Um, you do want to know what's going to be shared on your site and you want to have some structure for how it's shared. But there's a good balance to find in there. So you know, people tend to engage well with a site where they're going to have some information that's shared and pushed out to them, but they have the opportunity to reshare it, to comment, to add to it. Um, there's some fun there as well to that site. So those, those tend to be the opportunities where we do see people getting engaged and getting involved. So think about that mix as well. Think about what your content is adding for value. Um, what are you going to be um, filling for, for a, a piece of the puzzle? What are you going to be adding um, that's going to bring value to people's lives, the information you're sharing? Um, oftentimes, those, those project updates are valuable. You know, somebody's getting in the car and they're, they're driving to work or to school with the kids and everybody's got a schedule and we're, we're oftentimes running a couple minutes behind. And knowing that, hey, you know, four blocks away, the road's going to be closed, that's valuable. You know, knowing that you can just kind of check out a page and you're going to see an alert for what's going on in your town that day, that's valuable. Um, you're bringing value sometimes to their personal financial world. You know, when we're talking about water leaks, and we saw a lot of that last month, um, water conservation efforts um, being shared on social media um, I think it was Water Conservation Month, perhaps, um, but that's that's valuable. You know, that's adding value, helping people to think about: um, Is your toilet having a leak? How do you test for that? Is your water meter working correctly? So um, there are a lot of areas that you're probably already adding value, and you can push that out into your page and fill that area for for your audience. So we talked about some of this, I won't go into too much detail, but you can share project updates, public service announcements, celebrating holidays, sharing other departments information. That's a really great way to build um, engagement on your own site. You know, if your parks and rec team, for, for instance, is already managing a site, um, if your town administrator has a site that they're they're working from share that information you know law enforcement typically has a a following that you might be able to to share out as well um so share others information um and then we'll talk in a, in a bit about how to tag others and use others to engage in your own information educational content we'll share some of that coming up recognition um social media really is a fantastic way 
to build recognition and awareness, to recognize your team, to recognize your community, to recognize the role you have as stewards of um, public tax dollars. So recognition and advocacy really uh, is what I would say is one of the, the primary benefits of social media and an effective social media presence. These your upcoming meetings, events, how to's, you know, I've seen some really great how to videos and information coming out from communities on their social media pages and their Facebook page. So definitely there's a lot of opportunity to share, you know, what is the right way to compost? What is the right way to um, sort your recyclables? What is the right way to, to test if there's a leak um, in your home? So lots going on there in that space. And I think that's another great way to share content that already exists um, and really leverage that without having to start from beginnings. I also encourage if you are getting started in the world of social media, follow others and I'll, I'll share some tips for doing that. But there is a ton going on out there already that you can share. It builds that person or that site's um, following. It builds awareness. If you're sharing somebody else's content and you're tagging them and um, sharing it with a way that kind of brings recognition to them, they're going to see their following um, improve. And then it's getting information out there without having to take time to create it. So follow others, you know, follow the, the LTAPs, Parks and Rec, Select Board, APWA, you know, has some great industry information. We're going to show some posts from some of the local road agencies here in New Hampshire. Check them out, you know, share their, their information insights. State DOT, New Hampshire DOT does a great job with social media. Maine DOT has a fantastic um, kind of following of visuals that they share out. And I'll show you some of those this morning, but follow some of those other existing sites and platforms because you're going to see content that you can use. You're going to see how others are engaging. You're going to kind of get a feel for how folks are doing this. Um, there's just a lot out there already to avoid you having to recreate the wheel. Local news, um, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, um, Health and Human Services, Fish and Wildlife, um, municipal insurance providers or um, municipal associations, water associations. There's a little bit of everything out there. Um, one of the things I would recommend is kind of starting to, to create a directory. Uh, and that's what I've done. So I have followed most of these sites, you know, as I become aware of them, I follow them. We'll talk about creating a, a list of friends that you follow and using that information to stay up to date and also create a directory of um, their, their screen names. So I find if I'm tagging sometimes the at and then I start to type something out, it doesn't immediately catch who I'm wanting to tag. So I've got a little directory going, just a list of the common sites that I tag, people whose information I share and their screen name so I can more quickly just at sign type it out and then it's going to populate who I'm wanting to tag or uh, send recognition to. So we'll share some of those tips as we proceed this morning also. You can set up Google alerts and I'm sure there are other um, tools that, that kind of do a similar function, but through Google alerts, you can set up some keywords, some industry mentions, um, mention of your town, and it's going to alert you when that is seen um, kind of out there in the social media world. So it just helps maybe hone in on um, things that are happening on Twitter. You can also set up Twitter alerts um, so that you know if somebody um, tweets about a certain topic. Um, Google alerts will kind of scroll a little bit more of the web and, and find some other mentions as well. Um, you can choose what type of mention you want. You know, did a blog just mention water conservation? Uh, is there a, a video that was just released on um, pavement preservation? So there is a lot you can do in the world of Google alerts. Um, make sure you're kind of conservative you know, think about what you really want to know about. Obviously, the World Wide Web is a huge space. Uh, you don't want to flood your inbox with thousands of Google alerts every day. But this is just one more way you can kind of start to hone in on what's happening in a space that might be relevant to your audience and find content to share with them. Create those follow lists. So like I mentioned, um, you can use the Facebook friends feature to create follow lists. Uh, so if you are following 20 pages, you know, industry pages, other local road agencies, you're not necessarily connected to them as friends, but you can build a friends list that includes them. So I, for instance, have a friends list uh, that shows me the local road agencies throughout New Hampshire that I know have a, a site, a social media presence on Facebook, and I can see all the updates from that particular friends list. So if I click to that list, I'm just gonna see anything that um, Guilford has posted or Merrimack has posted. So I can quickly kind of scroll through and see what's going on um, out there. You know, what, what our Public Works friends have shared to their sites. So create that follow list. Um, and if you have questions on how to do that, this is one area I'm happy to, 
to Zoom and show you or, or walk through a bit more, but it really does allow you to stay in touch with what's happening. And by doing that, if you see a post that interests you, that might be of interest to your audience, you could share it right then and there. So you can click share and it's going to go out to your page. Or if you don't, don't think you need the content right now, um, maybe you've already scheduled out content. Maybe you, you kind of are a little um, weak in content for next week, save it. So you can save any posts you see. And then you can always go back to your save list when you're trying to refresh your content or publish or schedule it out. And you'll kind of have a little resource of a, a toolbox of content that you can share later. So create that follow list, um, save, save the content that you see that's of relevancy or interest. Either you use it immediately or you can use it later, but you've got it saved for, for access. Um, the directory, again, that's that's something I've found helps me just in tagging people, looking for um, pages that I, I like to refer to a lot or share their information. Um, if anybody has figured out how to more effectively use the at to tag and, and kind of get the, the page that you want each and every time when you type it out, I would love to hear that tip. But if you're struggling to remember, you know, what is the screen name for New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, for instance, um, you, you do at NHDE and it's not coming up or lots of other things are coming up, creating that directory or just that list of those pages that you commonly refer to can help you to very quickly just copy and paste their screen name over and then it'll populate in the post and it'll tag them. They'll get an alert that you've shared something or you've tagged their page. Um, so that's just a good way to build that engagement as well. And that's another area I'm happy to, to share some more information or a demonstration if that helps folks as well or even share the directory I've created if you wanna get started with that. Be yourself. So I've talked quite a bit about sharing others' content and um, giving credit for that sharing, but you also want your content to reflect you, your team, your agency. Um, behind the scenes information is always welcomed. And many of our public works friends here in New Hampshire do a great job you know, showing what's going on in the mechanical department, showing what's going on in the water department, um, giving a, a glimpse of what's happening in parks and recreation for when they're cleaning up parks. So People love to see projects. We love to see, you know, bridge, bridge building or um, road preservation, whatever it might be. Um, be yourself, share behind the scenes, share your news, um, do some guest takeovers. You know, people love to know who, who's, who's who at the transfer station or who's behind the desk if I call public work. So give an opportunity to highlight your employees, um, to do a guest takeover, to share information, infographics, you know, take that data that you wanna push out and maybe make it really visual and tell the story of public works. That's a, a strong benefit of social media is that you can tell the public work story visually and have a, a big platform, you know, people that are gonna share information. So some of you have done a great job with that in um, the world of recycling, for instance, you know, sharing what your communities have recycled, making that really visual and the dollars that it can save. Share feedback, um, share events, share any press that's notable. So. Be yourself, make sure that you're sharing about yourself as well. That's that soapbox dinner party balance right there. Have fun, celebrate and engage. So here are some posts um, that, that I just kind of pulled together from our New Hampshire area um, that I think do a really great job sharing some of that fun. So Merrimack has, um, and I think, I think we've got Kyle and possibly Don on the call. They have a really enviable open house that I am looking forward to, to seeing more about. Um, but one of the things they did was they had a winter carnival today and they, or I'm sorry, a winter carnival in the past. And they shared, you know, here's our winter carnival today. They shared some pictures. It's fun. Um, it's got a little humor there. You know, we had a real good time. So that's just a really great way to engage and celebrate. Um, Gelford used a birthday to recognize the individual's efforts and you know, celebrate their birthday, but also talk a little bit about the role and the work that this person was doing to, to highlight their contributions to the team and to the community. Um, and then Keen did a fun little post recently on peepers. Um, so they were doing a spring peeper count. There were some road closures uh, related to the, the peepers crossing, um, which I didn't actually know as a thing until I read about this. So it was great to, to be educated in the process. Um, but you know, that's fun to, for people to know. You can see for, the, for this peeper crossing, uh, 160 comments or 167 interactions, whether it was likes or loves or whatever, um, 163 shares. So this post got out there and you know those 63 shares, 163 might've gone in other directions as well. So have fun, celebrate, engage. You can use social media for public service announcements. Um, so hydrant flushing, um, Brookline Public Works uh, has done a fantastic job really keeping um, the public informed of what's going on with each snow event or weather event, and also sharing some information about how 
the team is responding to that event and why. Um, they, they talked a little bit recently, and I think Hancock did the same thing um, about uh, the impact of during mud season, you know, what causes the, those potholes or what causes um, muddy roads and what causes um, the freezing thawing cycle. Um, why are we uh, addressing the this snow event the way we are, you know, what, what kind of goes on behind the scenes for choosing salt sand. Um, is it going to melt? Is it not going to melt? Are we leaving a little layer on the roads to plow off later? So use that opportunity to share that public service announcement, but also to educate and share some information. We love seeing PW pets. Um, Bettina has done a great job sharing our own PW pets and others PW pets. Uh, we've been using hashtag PW pets and Brookline you know, has a, a, a pup that is regularly appearing in their posts. So they're kind of fun to follow. Um, and you can see that, that the community seems to respond to that. Project updates. So again, Merrimack um, has done a, a really nice job of sharing project updates. They've used um, drone footage to share their bridge um, updates and things going on in their project. And I won't put Kyle or Don on the, the spot, but if I can, if either of you are interested in hopping in and talking about this, I think this was a really great way to keep people informed of what was going on but also to share a little bit of public works industry. I'm gonna pause and see if they are on the line and wish to comment on how they're using Facebook for public works. Hi, Marilee, thanks. Hey, Kyle. Um, yeah, this was a fun one. Um, throughout the, uh, we've, we've done a few bridge projects over the past number of years. And we like to give uh, people a close up view of the actual construction of the bridge. Everyone drives by and just wonders why it's taking so long. So we put a lot of uh, videos of the deck placements, the uh, installation of the rebar, um, structural steel placement, all the things that people can't see um, that that is the cause of their delays. And that's all they really care about. Uh, but seeing the actual process really, really helps to bring engagement. Um, and then of course, we like to celebrate when it's done. The uh, Merrimack PD did this uh, last spring for us, they uh, they had a new drone and they took some footage um, uh, of the brand new bridge project, which of course will never look better than the uh, the day that it opens. So it's great to have that as a uh, archive footage as well. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, it's um it's really fun to see the process, and I kind of followed around along over the past several months as you've shared different pieces of it. Um, and I think it's great that you're able to kind of partner with your your PD department as well. Um, to get some of this information out there. Excellent, thank you. So great stuff. And you know, I think this, this is the, the sort of information people like to see. And Kyle brings up that good point of, um, it's the behind the scenes. You know, if the road is closed and you're driving by, it's not always easy to see what's going on and why things are taking the time they're taking. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity to share a little bit more about that. Um, also compelling user behavior. So this is another way we see um, to, to engage and share within your community what's going on. Um, so we talked a bit about recyclables. So compelling people to recycle right. So sharing how you can help. And I think what Guilford did here, which I really like, is they kind of make that request. You know, it's an ask for your help. You know, how can you help us? Um, we're celebrating the team. Our awesome solid waste attendants have, have said that there's a bit of a concern with how recyclables are coming in. What can you do to help us? So it's being really friendly, personal, you know, you're making that one on one connection to say, hey, could you could you do me a little favor here? Can you help us with this recycling situation? Um, Merrimack had that bag it and then trash it pet waste and stormwater video, um, which they did with Merrimack TV. Use your existing resources. If you have a public television station, if you have a, um, a police department that's sharing information, you know, your law enforcement, your um, rescue departments, whatever, use those existing resources to try to um, partner up for opportunities for outreach and engagement. And I think you know, Concord, for instance, has done a nice job of that. They've got some great videos that Concord General Services have shared. Exeter, I've seen the Exeter um, Public Works Department partnering with their um, community television as well. So partner up with those in your community that can maybe help you share your message. Um, they get some content that then they can share out. Um, people love video. I cannot stress enough how much people prefer to see um, quick little videos. Um, visuals really important. Um, but, but look for those opportunities to integrate that. And if you are not um, a video person, if you are not the specialist in that area, find somebody who is, and they might be willing to help you put together some, some outreach in that regard. 
share events, you know, touch a truck, other events that you've got going on, share it, um, share appreciation. Um, make sure that you are showing appreciation for the work that goes in behind the scenes from your community, um, from your employees. Um, share some data within that. So share how many tons of waste they're moving, um, what, what you're doing, how many roads you've plowed, how long you were out there through that storm. Um, people like the specifics. And again, it helps to educate our, our communities on what Public Works is doing. You know, so those who might not be attending your meetings, um, might not be attending the select board meetings, um, the budgeting consideration process, start to inform them about some of those, those statistics and some of that data so that they're more equipped to, to understand um, some of those requests that you might come forth with periodically. Um, this is just some great recognition. I want to go through just a couple slides of how folks are recognizing their teams and, and their employees, um, retirements, um, snowplow operators, you know, what they what they do. And I saw this post circulate quite a bit this year, and it was a really nice reminder about the things that um, everybody who's out maintaining our roads in the winter is giving up um, while they're out doing that on behalf of our communities. Um, grading. So Amherst shared a post about, you know, what the graders are What's going on out there with the crew is um, tending the roads. Um, they reminded folks, if you see something, say something, you know, report it to us, let us know. I've seen a lot of you doing that with potholes right now. You know, if you see a pothole, give us a call. Let us know that it's out there so we can take care of it. Um, Keen recently celebrated their longevity award recipients. So they did a nice collage. Uh, again, very visual. Um, it's, it catches your eye. People can see that and, and can get right into it. Um, here's some of the um, stewards of public tax dollars. You know, how are you showing your fiscal responsibility um, to your community? And this is a great educational opportunity, but also raising awareness of the important role public works has with the budgets you have to make it stretch and to, to really um, contribute in as fiscally responsible a way as you possibly can. You're all creative in, in what you're doing with your dollars. Um, so here we have kind of a mix of um, congratulations, you know, celebration from Guilford for um, what a great job the town's been doing recycling, how that saves some money. Um, Concord shared um, that they converted their pole lights to LED and what those cost savings are going to be. So you can use posts like that um, to, to recognize, to celebrate, to thank the public for their support, you know, thank them for approving a budget. I think it was... Um, South Windsor, Connecticut, you know, they shared last year about the new roof on the library and how it had been built to um, last, I think, 10 years or whatever it might have been. It, they were able to extend its life through the contributions, through the tax dollars that were budgeted and allocated for that. Um, and, and it's a good reflection of um, the effort you're doing when you're preparing projects, when you're thinking ahead, you're putting in time and consideration to make sure you're getting the best value for your dollars because you're, um, you're, being responsible for those taxpayer dollars. So use social media to engage that as well. Information and context. Um, so there are a lot of great visuals out there that you can borrow and share. Um, how potholes are formed has been circulating around right now. Um, sinkholes, you know, how, how a, a culvert repair takes shape, you know, what it looks like. Um, I like that this has got a little bit of personality to it. You know, the, the poster acknowledged that We've not seen anything like this before in our time with public work. So very interesting. Um, so share that, you know, share your personality, share your, um, your knowledge and your expertise, um, help to educate the community. Um, I saw some posts last, last year about roadside mowing and what knotweed was and why those crews were avoiding the knotweed, how they were going to address that later. Um, and that helps the public. They might be driving along and seeing, well, why hasn't this been mowed? I see they mowed everywhere else in the area. Why would they avoid this? And rather than somebody being confused or maybe upset that you skipped their area, um, they've got that information to say, ah, they're, they're being really responsible in trying to avoid the, the um, spread of this invasive. So use your, your information and provide context that helps people to be better informed consumers of public works. And these are just some other examples of um, those opportunities. So readynewhampshire.gov puts out some great visuals that you can use. And you can see that um, you know, this post on the left is a sharing. Um, so Keen shared that um, from another one. Share media, you know, so Concord um, General Services shared an article about um, one of the projects that they had to address. I forget, I think it was Concord who also had a culvert pipe rescue of maybe a, 
raccoon or something like that. Um, or they were doing an inspection maybe. So as the camera was going through the culvert, they came across it. It might've been a raccoon, but in the culvert. And it just made for a really great video to share out there and to get some, um, some visibility into what was going on in those culverts. So that was kind of a cool little share as well. Um, and then Brookline, you know, reminding people that um, winter is is still out there. Um, here's what's going to happen. You know, if the frost leaves the dirt road, more moisture is added, um, we might see the roads get muddy again. Here's what we're going to be doing to try to combat that. So keeping ahead of those questions and helping to inform people and really along the way, you're creating champions, you're creating people in your community who will advocate for you. You know, if somebody has a concern for um, during mud season, you know, somebody can say, hey, you know, but did you realize that here's what they're doing? You know, here's kind of what they're up against. And you've got those champions for you. Use existing content. You know, visuals are really popular. These are some posts from Maine Department of Transportation. I mean, I definitely recommend following them if you're looking for information that you can share out to your community. Um, they've got some really good educational visuals um, that you can reuse. Have fun. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with TikTok or the Chipotle lid flip challenge, but TikTok, um, you tend to see little challenges come up on TikTok where people film themselves doing whatever the, the challenge is in a quick little manner. And they did the Chipotle lid flip challenge and it had 240 million views. Um, 240 million people looked at this little lid flipping and how you flip your Chipotle guacamole lid um, challenge. They then followed up with the guac dance um, and that was a bit of a challenge and a competition. And they had 250,000 video submissions in six days to their guac dance challenge. So have a little bit of fun. You know, who would have thought that um, something as simple as an avocado could become a challenge that gets millions of views and, and submissions. So think about having fun, use a little bit of humor. Um, Congress General Services recently um, found its throne king or the king for its throne as part of their um, water conservation and sensible water use um, contest that they did. Guilford had a little funny post about potholes. Um, you know, don't be a pothole victim, reporting them. So use a little bit of humor. Again, show your personal side, show the, the fun side. It gets recognized. You know, any of these could have become a letter or a memo that went out. It could have been a flyer that advertised the contest Concord was doing. Could have been just a memo on the website that, that warned about potholes and how to report them. But by making it engaging and visual, people are more apt to respond to it, share it, like it, do something that raises its visibility so that others will see it. So use a little bit of humor. Uh, be hip, you know what's trending, um, what's happening in the world, use hashtags, you know, know what the buzz is. Ty did a really great job with that um, a couple years ago. It's probably even been more than that at this point, but there was the Tide Pod challenge that kind of took hold and um, people were consuming Tide Pods as part of that challenge, which obviously is not um, the, what the marketing team at Tide had in mind for the Tide Pods. That is not part of what they wanted to get out there in the world it was dangerous. So they addressed it. You know, they, they came right out and instead of um, hiding behind the scenes, you know, they, they tried to spend a little bit of humor um, to be hip, to be relevant. Um, to get attention, but also to say, hey, you know, not what we want you to be doing. This is not what our product was intended for. for. Um, and they partnered with Rob Gronkowski and um, he kind of came out and, and did a little um, skit video on uh, what you should do with Tide Pods and what you should not do with Tide Pods. And so they, they definitely but had a little bit of celebrity partnership there. But again, use um, an opportunity to embrace things that are going on. We saw it with the, the white situation at the start of COVID, there were some clogs um, being experienced due to people flushing wipes. And right away, you know, there were, there were some posts that really got a lot of recognition for people saying, hey, don't flush your wipes. You know, this is not what we wanna be doing. So try to find those opportunities where maybe it's a message that you don't wanna feel like you're just sending out an email, um, harping on people for, um, not following the rules at the transfer station or um, for plowing their snow into the road or shoveling it into the roadway, for instance, and find a way to make a little humor of it, get your message across in a way that's a little bit friendly and engaging. Remember that public works advocacy starts with you. Um, if you missed our conversation last week or the week before 
um, we had a great group of Public Works peers that were talking about how they're building advocacy in their communities. And that included you know, things that they're sharing through Facebook, through social media, um, how they're engaging with their community. Maybe you can't always show up for a birthday celebration, but if you've got that opportunity to share something on social media, take it. You know, you're, you're based in your community, you're a part of that community. Um, and make sure that they're seeing you, that they're not just seeing you um, as the trucks are going by out front plowing the roads, but that they know that you are a community member, an advocate, a partner, um, build that relationship. And I think social media is just one way to do that. Before we jump ahead, I'm going to pause and see if there are any questions or anything we've talked about, you know, in terms of sharing, you know, how else are, are folks sharing? What are they doing on social media or what questions do you have? Pause for a minute and see if any has anyone has anything they want to add. And certainly if anything comes to you, if you've got an opportunity to engage that we maybe haven't touched on or you've got a question, feel free to throw it out into the chat pod. Um, we'd love to, to hear what others are doing to, to build engagement and to, to use social media. For public works advocacy and, and for sharing and communicating. Checking again if anybody's unmuted. That's my cue to pick on them. All right, not seeing anyone. You can always come back to any thoughts you have. So all the fun stuff aside, what do you want to avoid if you are embracing social media and starting a presence in your community? Certainly you want to avoid anything that's wrong, misleading, or otherwise harmful information. Um, you don't want to spread misinformation. Um, it, you want to stay within your wheelhouse. You know, share what you know, share what is true, share what is factual. Um, have permissions to share. You know, don't violate trademark, copyright, um, other intellectual rights. Um, make sure if you're sharing photos of children, you have permission to do that. You know, make sure that everything is um, on the up and up and that you're, you're keeping it ethical. And it can sound really burdensome and scary at first, but once you get familiar with you know, how to give credit, where to find content. Um, it really does become far more routine. And you certainly don't wanna share private or confidential information. You know, if you have heard something through the grapevine or through a, a meeting that you are a part of and it's not yet ready for public consumption, you wanna make sure that you're being sensitive to that. You wanna make sure that what you are sharing is truth, fact, factual, and that um, it, it should be shared. Obviously no harassment, bullying, character attacks. You know, there's always a fine line from humor um, and what's inappropriate. So you know, make sure that whoever is managing your social media presence is somebody that really understands how to walk that fine line, um, how to use humor in the right way and how to remain polished and professional um, because it's, it's super critical that your page remains clean, remains appropriate. I mean, you want somebody who you can trust overseeing that. Um, indiscretion for non-public matters. So that's that personal personnel issues, you know, litigation, things that might be happening um, within the community that just are not intended for public consumption. It is not um, uh, the obligation or, or the appropriateness of, um, for instance, your public works department to be sharing that, that information. Obviously you wanna avoid that. It should remain a professional presence. Seen, threatening, harassing, racist, degrading, all of those things that are no-nos, um, you know them, make sure the person managing your page knows them as well. You wanna avoid politics. Um, certainly a, a um, local agency social media page is not the place for politics. You know, that, that is protected in some ways. It, it could be a violation of the ethics, certainly of the law. So you wanna make sure that your page does not become a political page. I'm saying for religious beliefs and personal opinions, you know, certainly, Everybody is entitled to their own personal opinion on their own social media site or when they're operating in a personal capacity, but that public works page or that local agency page, that is not the place for a personal opinion. That is a place for factual information, for sharing, for outreach, for engagement. And you just wanna make sure that um, whoever you're entrusting um, to manage that page is somebody that understands and respects that as well. And this is all information um, that I'm gonna kind of go through a little bit quickly um, some of this because um, certainly Stephen Buckley will have far more information on some of the, the best practices and the do's and the don'ts uh, when he comes back on April 22nd. Make it visual. Um, so we've talked a lot about what you can share and hopefully some of those posts I shared you saw, they're really visual, they're eye catchy, they get people's attention. That is what you want. Um, show me, don't tell me. People um, aren't necessarily turning to Facebook for a memo. Um, we're not looking for an email in a post format. 
We're not looking to squeeze that one page memo into a Facebook post. Video and images are huge because they're, they're visual, they get attention. There are certainly ways to um, partner up your visual with more text. Um, but if you've got a lot of information, a lot of detail, link back to it. Um, we'll talk a bit about record retention in the sense that you know, everything you post should be saved somewhere else where it's accessible to all. But you could certainly use a quick visual to link to more information, get their attention, and then bring them to the detail they need to know if it's relevant to them. So for instance, trash delay. It's big, it's bright, it's bold, it gets our attention. If I don't care about the trash delay, it's not going to impact me. I'm not, you know, maybe in Concord, I have private trash service, whatever. I'm not going to click and look for more information, but it gets my attention. You know, if I am impacted or I know somebody who might be, I'm going to share it. They've got 95 shares to this. So 95 people said, oh, somebody might care about this. I'm going to share this so that they, they see this. And you see they put some more information here. They tagged Casella Waste System. So again, that's the using the at, and then they tagged Casella Waste so that um, they're, I'm assuming that's their trash provider. Um, their collection is through them. Um, so that they, they also are getting an alert and their page might show up in those posts. And it just kind of brings some more visibility to that post, a little more traction to getting that message out. Um, same for the parking ban. You know, it's a nice quick photo. It gets attention. If it impacts you, you're going to click and learn for more information. So keep it visual. Um, use tools to help you with creating that visual content. So although I certainly won't um, sell any apps. Um, there is a lot out there for, for visual engagement. Um, everybody can be using something different. Um, you certainly um, might have your own photos are ideal. You know, any photos that your team is taking and sharing with you are certainly preferred for visuals. But if you want to generate some of these quick visuals that we've seen on some of these posts, um, within UNHT2, we're using a, a product uh, called Canva. C-A-N-V-A uh, dot com. And again, I'm certainly not selling the Canva product. It's just what I'm familiar with. Um, but it, they have a free version. Many of these other um, sites do have free, free versions as well. And you can create a quick visual. You can use pictures from the library. You can add font to it. They've got templates. You can do a, a flyer. You can do a newsletter. Um, you can uh, do quite a bit. You can download it as a ping file, as an image that you can then upload. Um, so Canva is one that I'm familiar with, but use tools um, to, to your ability um, to, to make it visual, to take that message and cut out the words and make it splashy. Um, Pixabay is another site I'm familiar with. Again, not um, necessarily selling Pixabay, but uh, they are another site for um, free, free photos and um, for downloading. Um, most of it that I've seen is not copyrighted and, and is free for use if you're looking for some visuals. Um, so you could check that out. The other thing I would recommend is um, finding a QR code generator that you're comfortable using. Uh, QR codes are becoming more and more common. Uh, if you had told me a couple of years ago that uh, we would be using QR codes to scan the menus uh, at local restaurants. I, I wouldn't have imagined that, but um, that's just one of those technologies that suddenly really rushed to the forefront in the past year or so is a QR code. So QR codes are a great way to push people to your site, to just have them scan. So any of those materials you're putting out, any information you're putting out, if you want to, you know, you're going to a community event and you're going to have flyers there, or you've got a, a poster, a bulletin board, whatever it might be, put a QR code to your website or to your Facebook page, to your Twitter page, whatever, right there. And then people can scan that QR code and get right to your information. Um, so there are QR code generators out there. You can just do a Google search or a search and um, come across a couple of them. Um, I'm happy to share the one I use if, if you want to reach out. Um, I also use bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, bit.ly um, for shortening um, text, for shortening, uh, I'm sorry, um, web addresses. So if I have an address that I want to share a page, but it's really long, bit.ly will shorten it down to um, just a, a short little piece and it's customizable. So I could say bit.ly slash CCM exam, for instance, rather than a big long Qualtrics survey exam that we, we distributed recently. So use some of those tools that are available to you. And as you start to follow other pages, I think you'll see how others are using them. Uh, and ask, you know, ask your peers, what are you using? What are you doing? Hey, that post looked really great. What'd you build it in? Because there's a lot out there that's free, that's available, that's quick and easy to learn and use. Um, and, and, you know, don't, don't pain yourself trying to create that perfect post if you can pull it together and two, three minutes and you have a couple templates that you've set up in some of these programs that you can just plug in your information and create a nice visual. So use the tools available to help elevate your presence and get yourself beyond 
just that standard sharing a memo through a post and move to that more visual engaging state. Um, but there are certainly apps to help you elevate and do that. This is one example, um, and I don't know what this newsletter is being built in, but it looks similar to you know, some of what you can do in Canva. Adobe Spark is another one I know people use for, for building some quick newsletters. Um, but what I think was good about this is um, this department in Guilford DPW has an opportunity to contribute to this town newsletter. So they have the down and dirty with DPW um, column that they contribute to and they shared potholes, frost, frost heaves and road posting. So they were able to break down some of that information. But she also in this post shared, you know, if you, if you haven't read the hub or you don't get that, we're gonna share some of this on social media as well. So be watching our Facebook page for these tips. So they were able to use that same content um, in multiple different places. So. Again, don't reinvent, um, stay in your wheelhouse, but find ways to, sh to share what you're already doing throughout different avenues. And social media is just one more way to do that. Some other tips to help you, um, you know, you want to try to be consistent in posting. Um, people like to see a page that has some regular ongoing contribution. So they wanna see a post, you know, whether it's once a week, a couple times a week, or they wanna know that there's some consistency that your page didn't just kind of come out of nowhere and there was a flurry of excitement and lots of posts. And then it went silent for six months. So think about some consistency but most of us are really busy and you don't have an hour a day to dedicate to, to Facebook or social media. So use the scheduling tools that are available for whatever presence or site you're using. Um, for Facebook, for instance, has a scheduling option. So you could save the posts as you see them throughout the week or a couple weeks, you know, things that interest you, save content, and then take half an hour and use that scheduling feature and schedule things out for the next month. You know, if something comes up meanwhile that you want to share sooner rather than later, put out an extra post, but then at least you have some consistency and you don't have to worry about every day trying to figure out what to post. So use scheduling features that are available um, and, and that can kind of help you with that. So I was just checking the chat there. Save posts, like I mentioned, I don't know if we all remember, keep on clipping back in the Sunday papers, but you know, clip those posts, save those posts that you're seeing from your friends, from those you're connected with. Um, yeah, you can create a saved list. Most, most social media sites allow you to save something automatically, but if not, you know, create a list, a Word document, an Excel document um, with a link out to the things that you wanna reshare from others later, but make sure you're clipping those coupons as you see them. Clip those posts, save those posts, have a backlog of content that you can share out um, when you have the time to sit down and do it so that you're not kind of spinning your wheels trying to think, what do I share next week? What do we share the week after? Um, know what's coming up in public works. Um, you know, what are some of the campaigns, whether it's National Public Works Week, Work Zone Safety Awareness. I think this, this month, it's Distracted Driving Month. Um, Bettina will jump in if I'm wrong, but uh, she's been sharing some distracted driving posts. There's a lot out there that you can borrow and share with your community on distracted driving, encouraging healthy and safe driving habits. So um, clip things, save things, um, keep track of stuff behind the scenes so that when you have some time to sit down and schedule out your, your social media efforts, you've got some content to fall back on and you're not starting from fresh. All right, here's the parts we're going to flip through a little bit quickly um, because this is going to be Stephen's bread and butter when he comes in on April 22nd. But I'm going to just pause and make sure there aren't any questions in the chat pod. If anybody needs to or has anything they want to add to the conversation. Not we are cruising right ahead. All right, freedom of speech and public forum. So you want to be really transparent in representing yourself versus your role. So this is not a personal forum when you are um, engaging on behalf of your public works department, for instance. Um, obviously, create usernames and profiles that reflect that, that it is a, a page that is dedicated and belongs to the public works team, for instance. Um, be nice. Strive for professionalism. You know, you want to be accurate, error free. We talked a bit about that. Um, if you need to edit a post, um, I would always you know, suggest including a comment about what you edited and why, if, if it's important, if it's just a typo for the, you can do that, but um, make sure that you are um, honoring that it's a public forum in the sense that people are going to your site for accurate information and you want it to be all on the up and up and transparent some of the things that you're doing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what that means, but 
Um, we all know that um, freedom of speech is a right to everybody, and we want to make sure we balance that with appropriate social media use and the expectation for how people engage with our, our pages. I'm not giving legal advice here, so I want to just caution that um, there's a lot of information out there um, that will help you to decide what are the best ways to, to engage with social media in your municipality while still adhering to your responsibilities as a municipal or government entity. We're going to have some more on that on April 22nd, like I said. Um, so these are just some of the things that you want to be thinking about, but you know, always talk this through before you, you jump into a social media strategy. Make sure that you, your select board, your administrator, others are aware of um, the direction you're going and you've thought it through and make sure that you've um, done everything to, to have a good solid um, policy in place for your social media use. Public employee freedom of expression. Um, so again, we, we want to always honor that everybody who's employed as a public employee has a full right um, to their individual um, personal opinions. Uh, we have freedom of speech. Um, we want to make sure that we are honoring, um, protecting people's confidential information, but also um, honoring that this is how you are responding in the scope of your own personal individual self versus this is a comment that you're making on our page on behalf of your role in public works. So there's a balance there. Um, there's also a balance in the new public forum. You know, it, is social media a public forum? You know, if you start engaging in conversation of a political nature on your page, or if it starts taking shape, if an elected official responds to a comment and starts engaging, um, has that now become a public forum? Has it become a conversation that needs to be protected? Has it become a conversation um, that, that should have been a designated meeting? Um, is it something that's happening in a non-public venue? So those are all the considerations that, you know, as we become a more virtual world, and most of you have seen it um, with Zoom meetings this year, um, how do we make sure that we are um, adhering to the Freedom of Information Act, that we are um, making sure that we capture um, protected uh, public information and records appropriately, that we are making them available to people. Um, so this is all stuff that you want to think about and join us on April 22nd for a little bit more. Um, but I think the big thing that I would suggest, you know, train employees, make sure that your employees who are administering your social media site understand what record retention matters are, make sure they understand what is or is not appropriate to be posting or participating in, that they understand how to comply with public records policies. Um, a risk that is different for elected officials is the potential to possibly violate open meeting laws through the use of social media. So you want to make sure um, that elected officials um, th that you're working with that are participating in your page understand um, that there are open meeting laws and how engaging in a social media presence could possibly start to, to um, be a concern that, that could violate that and what situations would, that would look like. Um, you want to also make sure that um, there's no political purpose for your page, you know, that we're not using um, a, a municipal page for political uh, gain. So these are just some of the things to think about, you know, link back all of your content that you're sharing. If it needs to be retained, it needs to be accessible to others. Make sure you're linking back to additional information, additional documents or resources. Um, again, use that visual and then link them back to your website if that's where the information lives and is retained. Um, use your social media as kind of that secondary outlet. Other considerations, you want to think about civil rights laws, um, freedom of speech, open forum, records retention, we talked a bit about that, employment related, you know, what is going to happen if somebody on the team um, engages in a comment that maybe goes against um, what your, your page would support or it doesn't reflect the views of the department, but they did so in a, in a personal um, community member capacity, you know, how are you going to, to manage those sort of situations? Um, what are you going to disclose for records retention? So if somebody makes a comment on your page um, that needs to be um, part of public disclosure, what, are, what is your response going to be? How do you make sure everybody has access to the information? So how do we ensure equal access um, for those who maybe don't have access to the internet, those that don't prefer to use the internet or social media, um, for those who maybe have um, vision impairments or um, other disabilities that they are working with that might impact their ability to access your content. How do you um, make sure everybody can access what you're sharing? So that's something to think about. I mean, certainly there are some tips and, and tools that can help you with that. Um, just think about the accessibility tools that are available to you and, and using them. You know, so closed captioning options for for Facebook, um, make sure that you are making materials available in alternative formats if they are needed. So there's a lot that's already built in that can help you with that. 
what what are you going to do about members that maybe don't want their comments to be public? You know, it is a public venue. So you want to make sure that you've thought about that and that your policy for your page outlines that this is a public venue. You know, any any comments um, are subject to public disclosure, and that's something people want to know about. And what is your responsibility to act on a comment? So if somebody raises a potentially unsafe condition, um, how are you going to make sure that that page is monitored and that those are addressed? Um, and there are some ways that some, some of the sites are doing that through um, posting or pinning a reminder that the site is not monitored. Here is where you need to report concerns, your know, public works concerns, safe condition concerns, whatever it might be. This is not the right venue to post them on our page. You need to make sure that you're calling into the office or you're using the app or whatever it might be. So those are just some things that you want to think about. You want to think about your employee participation um, policies that um, both monitor social media use while people are working. Um, from a safety perspective, we want to make sure that people are staying safe, but you might also want to be encouraging them to take a photo of the work and send it along to you. So how do you balance that? You know, encouraging people to participate in your, your um, team page, your public works department page, but also discouraging the use of social media in unsafe conditions or, or during work. So think about those sort of opportunities. Um, you want to, um, again, have a really solid policy for the administration of your page. You want to communicate, you know, that um, any opinion um, addressed or a comment from, from public is the opinion of that user. It is not necessarily the opinion of your page or your administrators. Um, you want to provide detail for how the, the page is managed, you know, who owns it, who administers it, um, where our policies or links that need to be retained, captured, what type of content is acceptable or unacceptable. Um, you wanna outline the rules of engagement, you know, under what circumstances might a post or a comment be removed? What will we not tolerate? Uh, you don't want to be, um, you don't wanna lack transparency. So people don't want to see you just delete a comment because it doesn't feel good. You don't like it personally. Um, that, that's not okay. You know, everybody has the right to their personal opinion. We understand that. But if you're transparent and you're saying, these are the, the expectations that we have for how you may comment or engage on our page, these are the scenarios under which we're going to delete a comment. These are the scenarios under which we are going to remove a comment. And if you stick to that, then um, you, you should be good as long as your policy outlines why you're going to delete comments, what sort of things are not allowable, and as long as you don't violate any laws in deleting those comments, of course. Um, you do want to um, avoid um, advertising. Um, you want to include in your policy that, you know, that's not allowable or um, what your expectations are for advertising or sharing content, for linking to content, um, what's allowable, who the contact is for your site, that's important. Um, so as you're creating that municipal policy for your, for your Facebook or your social media representation, these are just some of the things to build into it. Um, how potential legal issues have been considered. So, you know, build into your policy who's Who's gone through the consideration process of this page? Who participated in the decision to, to create a, a page for the Public Works Department, for instance? Um, any existing social media policies that um, already exist in your organization that you want to weave into it? So if it's a social media policy for how employees, you know, your, your town's employees might participate or might not, weave that in. Make sure that you're kind of lining them all up. There are a lot of templates out there. There are a lot of communities that have already created social media policies. Um, you can look at the National League of Cities. They've got some information on it. Um, Institute for Local Government has shared some information on creating policies um, for social media use. So um, as you develop your own, look to what others have done. So this, for instance, is the DES social media policy. I have not updated um, these next couple of slides in a several months. So these policies certainly might have changed. You know, I would go out to each of their sites to check them out. But you can certainly um, lean on the work of others to just get a sense of what you yourself want to do, but make sure it fits your community. You'll never use just a template policy um, without making sure that it's accurate and a re good reflection of your own, your own community. So here's just a few of them um, from Newton as well. And then have clear standards. You know, I talked about this a little bit, but really clear standards for how you're going to manage comments. Don't be hiding in the dark, deleting comments, making people wonder what's going on there. People can see when comments have been deleted or hidden. Um, people can see if comments hidden. You know, if it, if it shows that there are 20 comments, but then you click on the comments and there's only two showing up, 18 have been hidden. So you really do want to be super transparent about why you're going to manage comments if you're allowing them, if they're way off topic, if they're political, if they're profane. 
um, certainly if discriminatory, threatening, harassing language about violence that you would want to monitor um, and manage. Um, anything of a sexual nature, a legal nature, um, commercial, those are some of the things that you might say, this is how we're going to manage these comments, and you build that into your policy. The same for copyrighted information, you want to make sure that um, you're addressing that. This is what I mentioned earlier, you know, if you want to make sure people aren't posting their concerns, there's an urgent situation, there's a water leak, there's um, a giant pothole, there's a sinkhole, and they're not just putting it on the Facebook page and hoping that somebody gets to it. Um, make sure that you remind them that the page is not monitored. What is the purpose of your page and what is not the purpose of your page? You know, your Facebook page is probably not the place to report problems. You know, the, the quickest response, the safest response is going to be to get in touch with you directly through your after hours line, through your app, whatever it might be. Keen kind of um, the pin that that notice to their page so every time you go to the keen facebook page it's the first thing you see right at the top of their page is that it's not monitored 24 7 and i think that's a great way to just remind people um, you know how they can engage and, and be a good partner and make sure that you're you're aware of what's going on out there and what needs addressing i mentioned this a little bit earlier use tools to support accessibility so um any pictures you're sharing you want to put alt text so most social media platforms now make it easy to add some alt text and alt text just describes what that picture is. So if somebody's using a screen reader, for instance, and they scroll over that picture, the alt text is going to tell them it is a picture of a roadway with a grader and trees in the background. Uh, what are they seeing in that picture? So it just describes the picture. Um, most social media platforms have built in some really good alt text features. Some of them will even suggest alt text for you. Um, so you know that once you become familiar with it, doesn't have to be as, as big a concern. Captioning, you know, a lot of them will automatically caption a video. It's, there's some you know, accuracy issues there potentially. So you do want to be aware of um, what the captioning is saying. Um, but if you um, are looking for you know, captioning services, we're happy to share some thoughts on that as well. Um, but there are captioning options built into many of the platforms now. Um, and then make sure that uh, materials are available in other alternatives. So you know, post a little message. You know, if you need this in a different format, please reach out. So that folks that maybe can't um, listen to the video have another way to access that information that does um, work for them. Keep your page secure. You know, as staff members might leave, you want to make sure that you're changing um, passwords, that sort of thing. I'm going to bump a little bit quickly through this because we'll get into more of it um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but the risks in allowing commenting, you know, we, we've talked quite a bit about that, but failure to act on information, um, members of the public who might be um, concerned if their comment now is public record under the open records law. So anything that they comment on can become an open records um, public law, public record. Um, failure to monitor or remove inappropriate comments. So as soon as we allow comments, we also create that opportunity that, that we have to monitor and, and manage them. Um, for the most part, I haven't heard from a lot of local agencies that have had issues with that. Um, you want to also make sure that you're not violating free speech rights so you know that can be the other thing that comes with monitoring and removing um, comments but again if your policy is firm to this these are the inappropriate things that will be um, removed then you're sticking to your policy and, and you um, have some strength behind that but I, I haven't had a lot of experience hearing from people that um, public comments become an issue as long as you've really thought it through and you've, you're engaging in your page regularly and you're building that following and um, making sure that everything's staying clean, uh, you will inevitably get an angry comment once in a while. An angry comment isn't a, a bad comment. It's not a comment that's not allowed under your policy necessarily. People have the right to, to be angry. They don't have the right to threaten violence. They don't have the right to threaten you or your staff. They don't have the right to disparage or, or say things that are not untrue or are not true. Um, but angry comments, do happen. Um, if it is a, a misunderstanding, if it is inaccurate information, I suggest don't delete it. Add another comment that that clarifies, you know, thank you for your comment. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that your, your road was not plowed. What you might not know is that we were out through there, you know, 30 minutes before we had come through and then the snow squall picked up. Um, so you can certainly just clarify the information because it's better in some most cases to see clarifying information rather than to wonder why you deleted that comment. So if it's inaccurate information, um, before you just delete, think if there's a way to just clarify it because that angry commenter is always gonna come back. They're, they're not gonna just be like, oh, 
she deleted my comment. Must be she didn't like my, my big angry moment that I just shared across the World Wide Web. I won't do anything further with this. I got it out of my system. Odds are they're going to come back even angrier, even madder, and they're going to add another post to your page, or you're going to hear from them again. So it's always good to just respond to that angry comment in some way. What I would not recommend is getting into a back and forth with people. Um, I just don't think social media is the place to, to have a conversation with somebody who's angry. I think responding very succinctly, hey, you know, sorry for the trouble. Um, I'm going to try to give you a call or here's the, the public works line. Can you reach out to us so we can talk about this or posting the factual information, something that responds to their concern in a very polite, short, succinct way, but doesn't get into a back and forth is probably going to be your best bet for that angry comment. You know, so thank them for the feedback, apologize if it's needed, um, encourage them to reach out to you, um, correct any misinformation in the comment, um, but don't get, don't get uh, into anything that's going to make them angrier and don't just delete that angry comment. In addition to whether or not you should um, for legally protected public information, you're just going to have an angrier person who more than likely doesn't quiet down and just comes back even more upset. So be aware of that. Um, stay even toned. Um, let others evaluate the information that is presented. So if it's misinformation and you say even toned and you just respond with a comment that corrects that information, you are going to find that in many cases, the rest of your followers kind of become your champions of that. They're going to help you know self-police what's going on on your page. They're going to defend your team. They're going to defend the work you do. So let others evaluate the information that you've shared to correct misinformation. Remember point of view. Everybody is entitled to their point of view and everybody's coming from a different point of view. So you know that person who might be frustrated that um, the road has been closed for six hours, maybe you know, they, they've got a kiddo who has a doctor's appointment, they've got worries or stressors of their own going on, they're running behind. It's not necessarily your problem or your fault, but they have a different point of view. Um, so whoever's administering your page, you'll find somebody who, who really seems to have that innate ability to remember, not to take things personally, but to try to engage with the public in a way that shares information, helps them to understand your point of view as a team, as a public works um, community agency, as a group that's supporting the, the town or the city, but also who can respect others' point of view. And same for comments, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, if it doesn't violate your policy, if it's not dangerous, profane, you know, uh, those things we talked about, it's their point of view and you want to you wanna, um, allow that and, and be ready for that. You're going to find that in many cases, you know, even if somebody's point of view is way off base in your opinion and inappropriate, the rest of your followers are going to be aware of that and, and will, if not correct it, um, just disregard it in, in most cases. So do keep in mind that everybody has their own worldview um, and everybody's entitled to that. This is one little message that I just want to share with you. Um, this goes way back to last year from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, but I think they did a fantastic job acknowledging why they had deleted a comment. Um, and I think that's important because it creates that transparency. People um, don't want to wonder what's going on behind the scenes, why you're pulling things down, why comments are getting hidden. Um, so they very rightfully acknowledged that the language that was in a post, it was offensive. Um, it went against um, their, their policy and their, their expectation for their Facebook page, so they deleted it. So this is good. I think this is a good way to communicate and remind people of the policies and remind people that you really are trying to create a place that is welcoming, that is informative, that is helpful to the community, but that is not necessarily a community page. Um, if you have been on some of the Facebook community pages that individuals can create, it can be a free for all. You know, So use um, and share information on those pages um, kind of strategically. So as you're trying to promote, you certainly might choose to share with the, those Facebook community pages, but you want to just know um, what the followers are, you know, has it become political, that page, because it's not necessarily managed by your municipality, so you can't really be accountable for the, the content that's on it. Oftentimes, your followers become your defenders, like we mentioned earlier, so they are going to get behind you, they are going to support your team, they are going to correct misinformation, and that is great, that is really nice to have. If you get kind words, which hopefully you will, um, thank the customer, um, tag their names, you know, make sure that you try to elevate that post. If it's an angry comment, I would not do anything that, that's going to amplify that voice. You know, I would not tag that person. I would not share that, of course. Um, you just, you don't necessarily want to raise more awareness to that post. You, you might not want to delete it based on your policy and don't just delete the angry comment. But if it's a kind post, kind words, positive share it, thank them, tag them, do what you can to bring it up um, in terms of visibility in your feed.
Before we wrap up, wrap up a couple other quick tips for promoting your page. So now you've got your content, you've got your purpose, you know who you're trying to share with, um, link to it everywhere you can, whether it's in your email signatures, um, advertise it at events, printed materials, um, wherever you might be, um, have those QR codes if that's a way to engage people, connect your feed um, to your website. So have a link out to your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever you're using. Um, connect your press releases. So, you know, share them out um, as well. Uh, anything that's, you know, uh, being shared, of course, it should, it should live somewhere else that's not um, on social media that is available to everybody, um, even if they're not on social media. But think of all the ways that you can connect it. Like I mentioned earlier, tag others. That's going to raise visibility of your post. It's going to create an opportunity for others to, to share it. So whether it's um, industry associations that you're a part of, any APWA, NHPWA, um, towns nearby, you know, surrounding neighboring communities, departments within your uh, own community. So your department of health and services, your police department, your rescue department, tag others, uh, make sure that they are aware of your posts as they are helpful. Share strategically to community pages or other municipal pages. So like I mentioned, there are those community sites that anybody can create a profile and say, this is the town of Deerfield page. It does not mean it is owned or operated by town of Deerfield. It does not necessarily reflect the town's um, point of view or the administrator's point of view. It is a private citizen, or it could be somebody in a totally different country who has created that page and is administering it as an individual. So you might find that, you know, odds are your community has a couple of those pages. There might be some posts that you want to share. You know, if you've just put in place a composting program and there are compost bins available, maybe you share that out to that community page. Um, but just be sensitive that you, you lose control over what's um, happening on those pages. Uh, and some of them you can take a political nature. Some of them might not necessarily reflect the views that you're comfortable aligning with. So be sensitive in what you're sharing. You also don't want to like overextend your welcome um, to sharing. So, so be alert to that as well. Um, remember your purpose and your people. You know, good content is going to drive good engagement. So um, some of the promotion really just comes from posts that get recognized, posts that get shared, posts that get people excited, um, the funny things, the the good, warm-hearted things that make us feel good about what Public Works is doing every day, that's gonna get some of your engagement as well. Share and be a good sharer, you know, give credit where it's due. So these are a couple of good examples where um, Exeter Public Works has um, tagged a bunch of people down here in the comments you see, they've tagged their um, police department, their parks and rec department, um, the Professional Firefighters Association. So they're making sure that others in town that might care about this post, that might want to amplify it, are aware of it. And so this post was on um, concerns with, with children playing in snowbanks and the safety risks of that. So certainly you have so many other parts of your community that probably care about that post and might wanna share it within their own pages. So tag for that purpose. Um, it kind of cut off a bit here, but this um, Jessica's law share was from the County Sheriff Department. So share others, um, even if they haven't tagged you, but you see it come up in the feed, share it out if it, if it makes sense for your community as well. So sharing is a great way to reuse content, but also get some traction. Ask people to, you know, what do you think about, or please like our page if you're following it, you know, hit that like button, comment below if um, you have a question or comment below if you prefer. Uh, so use those opportunities to engage, ask them to like your page, ask them to like the post, ask them to share the post. You know, if it's a good public service announcement, remind them, hey, take a moment and click share so that others see this information. Um, use your hashtags. Well, it's a whole different conversation, but hashtags help to find content. So um, if you've got a hashtag that makes sense, you know, Public Works makes it happen is one we're using quite a bit right now. And then use that tagging, use that at sign to make sure that you're tagging um, others that might be interested. Start small. Um, don't go all out. Don't expect yourself to be posting 20 things each week. You know, have a, a kind of dedicated plan, have a policy in place, have somebody who you trust to administer the page. Start small, um, know what you want to do. If it's one post a week, um, if it's we're just going to post updates about road projects, if it's we're just going to post public service announcements, start small so that it's sustainable, that it's consistent. It's going to be quiet at first. You might feel a little bit alone you know, until you have some followers. You might just kind of be out there all by yourself. Give that some time. Stay consistent. Keep tagging. Keep sharing. Um, keep finding engaging content. Stick with it. Eventually, you're going to see people are kind of watching. So you might have some followers, and maybe they're not really engaging yet. 
Um, they're still kind of quiet, but you see they're there. You have likes on your page. You have followers on your page. Keep sticking with it. You know, that watching is going to go from silent, passive watching to engagement. At some point, people are going to start sharing your content. They're going to start engaging with your content and it's going to become more of that give and take. So if you start small, you can always ramp up but it's better than starting really big and then going silent. So start small, stick with it, expect it to be a little quiet at first. You know, it might just be your grandmother who's following along for a while, but stick with it. Um, and you're gonna start to see that engagement build. Don't give up, you know, so this is an article. Um, it goes back a little bit at this point, but last year um, in Claremont, they had shared um, how they had just begun their own uh, City of Claremont official Facebook page. And it kind of came from um, the efforts of their Public Works Assistant Director, Jeremy Clay. If any of you are familiar with Jeremy, um, he had a, a big part in starting to share what was going on within community service and public works uh, in Claremont. And he was doing that, I think, through his personal page um, and trying to get that information out. I could be misquoting that, but um, he had kind of been the driving factor behind um, getting more information out for Claremont. And there was a positive response to that. The community members appreciated that. They looked forward to those updates. And through those efforts, um, they were able to make a decision that it would make sense for the city of Claremont to have a Facebook page. So don't give up, stick with it. You know, if you have people that maybe aren't familiar with social media for municipal operations and communications, um, continue to help them understand you know, how it's being used, where it's being used. Always remember that whatever you say, it is always there. Um, it is never going to be buried to the point where people cannot find it. The World Wide Web is huge, but it is not a hiding spot. Um, those deleted comments can still circulate. People take screenshots, people take um, photos. So everything you say is always going to be there. It can always be unearthed. It can always come back up. So whoever's administering your page, you want them to really be sensitive to that. Um, and you should have a good experience. Uh, so a couple kind of parting thoughts there. Don't give up. Keep it professional. Keep trying. Reach out for technical assistance. We are so happy to help. So happy to give you some of our thoughts um, and some of what we're doing and some of what our friends are doing as well. Um, we encourage you to follow us. Um, this is YouTube. I'll skip through that one for time, but um, this is our Facebook so if you've got a moment to scan that and follow that, we certainly share content. We love to share your content as well. It is 9.30 exactly. Um, so I'm gonna pause and if anybody has questions, comments, input, anything that maybe we didn't touch on that you would love to share. Um, and certainly we hope we'll see you back on April 22nd, but I wanna take a moment for, for your, your comments and your thoughts as well. Mary Lee, I think I can jump in real quickly. Um, okay. I, I also wanted to say there are these national initiatives you can kind of piggyback on, like the National Work Zone Awareness Week is coming up the end of April, and they have a full social media kit you can use. And um, there's also Go Orange Day at the end of April, I think April 28th. And it also happens to be National Superhero Day at the same day. So there's a lot of synergy you can use and make it fun. So just as an example, you can tie that into your calendar because it's pretty much every year, the same month, the same week, and you get into a rhythm of that. Excellent. Thank you, Bettina. Great mention. Yeah, um, I've seen, I think AAA puts out content, um, the National Highway. Um, NHTSA does some of that as well. So excellent. You'll look to others to share. APWA has some information as well, those campaign opportunities. And I am in no way, um, I would never consider myself a social media expert. So one thing I would say, you know, parting words of advice, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, start small, reach out. We, we've learned a lot. Um, we have a lot of great colleagues that we know are doing great things. I've shared some of them today. Follow their pages. Let us know. If we're not following your page, we would love to. Um, we would love to share your information as well. Um, but hopefully you take a couple tips um, from, how to, from this on how to get started. We will share the recording. Um, for those of you who are in the New Hampshire Road Scholar program or looking for New Hampshire Road Scholar hours for your participation today, please take a moment and complete the post workshop evaluation to get that credit. Um, you can just use the bit.ly. Bettina's going to pop this into the chat pod as well um, or scan that QR code and that will bring you right to a Qualtrics survey, which is the evaluation. Um, 
But if there are no other comments, I'm going to say thank you all for sticking with us, for joining us today. We hope this has been helpful. We hope we'll see you back on the 22nd. If you have any questions, you need to get registered, let us know. Um, and if you think of anything that maybe we missed that you would want to add that you think is important or helpful for others to know as they get started, reach out and let us know. We, we appreciate your, your collaboration and your input. And stay well, stay safe, stay social. We'll, we'll watch for your pages if we aren't already following them. Take care, everybody. And I'll leave the room open for another minute or so for folks to get that that bit.ly link. Um, Sounds good. I'm just trying to paste it and it's really, really long if I copy it. So um, you can type it in if that's helpful. I think I social media was already taken. So yeah, I will do that. I think I've got it correct now. That should work. Okay, super. Thank you. Maybe just check my typing and click on that and make sure it actually brings you somewhere. <laughs> and that QR code's still up there as well for those who are accessing it that way. Yeah, it works perfectly. And thank you to everyone who had their camera on. It was so good seeing faces. Someday we will be back out there in the real world. <laughs>